Welcome to the lecture on 9.4 derivative formulas. In the last section, in the last lecture, we learned how to find derivatives using the definition, which you see above. This is when we applied the limit as h goes to 0 of the difference quotient, or specifically f of x plus h minus f of x, all divided by h. We went through a step-by-step -step process to solve the derivatives. In this section, we're going to learn how to find derivatives using shortcuts. These are shorter lessons or strategies for different types of functions and problems. However, be aware that if you're asked to solve a derivative or to find a derivative using the definition, you need to show your work by doing the above type process by using the limit of the difference quotient. This will definitely appear on the first test. There are a number of different derivative formulas or shortcuts. Here we've highlighted the first of those that we're going to learn. The first type of rule is called the power rule. This is when the function equals x raised to a power, the variable raised to a power. The derivative is equal to the power, you pull the power down in front as a multiplier, times the variable, and then the exponent, or the power, is one less. So here's an example. If we have a function equals x cubed, its derivative equals 3x squared. Notice the power 3 comes down in front as a multiplier, and the exponent is 1 less than 3, or 2. If um, The second rule is called the constant rule. This is if a function equals a constant. The derivative is always 0. For example, if f of x equals 4, then the derivative of f of x equals 0. We'll explain this a little bit more in detail in just a second. Then we have the coefficient rule. This is where a function equals a constant, here the constant is c, times another function. So we have c times g prime x. If so, for example, all this is saying is we can pull the constant out of the function and then apply it to the derivative later. If f of x equals 2 times g of x, then the derivative of f of x is 2 times the derivative of g of x, just pulling that constant out. We'll also look at this in more detail in just a second. The next two rules we can kind of look at together. This is where a function is actually the sum of two other functions, or a function is the difference between two functions. And so here we're allowed to take the derivative of each function and either add them or subtract them. So if f of x is g of x plus h of x, then the derivative of f of x is g prime x is the derivative of g of x plus the derivative of h of x. And this works the same if it's a difference. So these are really like polynomials. This is a polynomial type rule. So if our function is x cubed plus x squared, sorry about that message that keeps popping up. If our function is x cubed plus x squared, notice that what we do is we take the derivative of each term and then add them together because they were originally added. So the derivative of the first term is 3x squared. The derivative of the second is 2x. We pull the 2 down in front, and then 2 minus 1 is 1. We do this, see the same thing here. So let's try some examples with the power rule. There you go. You see our pause again. This is your hint to pause the recording and try these four problems. Notice the first problem is x to the 14. So we're going to bring the exponent 14 down in front. We're going to subtract 1 from the exponent, and we get the answer. The derivative is 14x to the 13th power. Let's try problem b. Here we have x to the negative 2. The negative 2 comes down in front, and then our power is subtract, uh, reduced by 1, so we get negative 2 minus 1. Or our answer is negative 2x to the negative 3. This is a fine answer here. But I wanted to remind you from algebra that negative exponents mean to reciprocate. So x to the negative 3 is actually the same thing as 1 over x cubed. And that's why it's moved to the denominator. This is just what a negative exponent means. In the next problem, we see y equals x. Remember that when you don't see an exponent, the exponent is actually 1. So we bring 1 down in front, and then we subtract 1 from the exponent, so we get 1 to the x 
1 times x to the power of 0. Remember, anything to the power of 0 is also 1, so our answer here is just 1. We can also use the power rule even if we have fraction exponents. So again, here we have x to the 1 third. The 1 third comes down in front as the multiplier x raised to the power of one-third, again we reduce it by one, and so we get one-third x to the negative two-thirds. Again, a reminder here whoop, that again a negative exponent simply means that we move it to the other side of the fraction. Let's look at the constant rule and understand what this means. Here's the graph of a constant function f of x equals eight. Notice that this is a horizontal line. Remember that the derivative is also a slope. It's a rate of change or the slope of the function at a specific point. And from algebra, we should remember that the slope of any horizontal line is equal to zero. So thus it makes sense that the derivative is also zero. Now let's look at some problems for the coefficient rule. Again, we see a pause. So pause your video, try these three problems and then start again and see how you did. The first problem, we have 4x to the fifth. So notice we just pull the constant out front, 4, leave it there, and then take the derivative inside. The derivative of x to the fifth, we would pull the exponent 5 down in front, then we'd subtract 1 from the exponent. So we have 4 times 5x to the fourth. Multiplying this through, we get 20x to the fourth. Maybe you wanted to watch that one and didn't pause, but I really encourage you to pause the video and try these on your own. It's much better if you try them first instead of just watching. You might be like me where you, when you watch things, you sometimes think you know how to do them and then later when you try them on your own, it's not quite so easy. So if you see these pauses, pauses, sorry, if you see a couple of pause, maybe you should also pause. Let's try problem B. The constant here is one half, so we're going to pull it out in front, and then we're going to take the derivative of t squared, which is pretty simple. So we pull the one half out in front, and then remember we're taking the derivative of t squared. The two comes down in front, which is the power before is the square. We subtract one from that power, and we get one half times two t, because two minus one is one, which gives us just the answer of t. On c here, this is a little bit confusing because we have a radical. You might not remember from algebra, but remember that radicals or roots also can be written with an exponent where whatever, whichever root it is, in this case it's a square root, that is a denominator of the exponent. So in this case we have 5 over q to the 1 half if we wrote it in exponential form. And then also if we remember that any exponential that occurs in the denominator we can rewrite as a negative exponent. Remember negative exponents mean reciprocate. So I can write this problem as 5q to the negative one-half power. Okay, so if I've rewritten that first, which I should have shown here but I didn't, sorry, you're on your own for that one. The 5 comes out in front because it's the multiplier and remember we're, tossing, we're multiplying 5q to the negative one-half so the negative one-half comes down in front, the q, negative one-half minus one. So I get five times negative q to the negative three-halves over two, or negative five over two, key to, two q to the three-halves. And since this was in a radical form, a root form to begin with, I'm going to put it back in there. The numerator is the exponent on the variable. The denominator is actually the root. So this is two in the denominator I have two square root of q of q cubed that was a little bit hard to say and then here's some of those notes about again the exponent over the root this is actually x to the power of a, a fraction the numerator is the exponent the denominator is the root also in blue you, blue you see here some notation things that I can write the derivative of g with respect to t is either g prime t that's one notation, or dg over dt. These both mean the same thing, just the derivative of g with respect to t.
The last thing we're going to look at is finding derivatives for a sum and a difference. Let's look at these two problems. Oh, there we go, pausing again. I again suggest you pause, take the derivative of each part of each problem, and then see how you did. In problem A, we're adding two things. We're adding two terms, 3x and 5. So our derivative will be the derivative of 3x plus the derivative of 5. Let's see how that looks. Well, the derivative of 3x, remember the exponent here is 1, so we pull that on in front. We just didn't write it this time because we're getting better. And then we subtract 1 from that exponent. The derivative of 5, remember the derivative of any constant is 0, so we have plus 0. So 1 minus 1 is 0, so we have 3 times x to the 0 power, which simply equals 3, because remember anything to the 0 power is 1. Now b looks a little bit more complicated, but it's actually straightforward and, and pretty easy to do once you've done a few of these. So we're going to take the derivative of each piece and then leave the operator between them. So we're going to take the derivative of 4x cubed. We're going to use the uh, coefficient rule and the power rule minus the derivative of 2x squared, again the coefficient rule and the power rule, plus the derivative of 5x, and then we already know this guy is going to go away because the derivative of any constant is 0. So let's see how that looks. So we get 4 times the derivative of x cubed. Notice I'm, I'm moving quicker through, I'm not doing all the notations. The derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. The 3 comes down, x to the power of 2 minus 2, which is the coefficient, times the derivative of x squared, which is 2x to the 1 power, plus 5 times the derivative of x, which we see here, and I did write it in there, minus 0. When I simplify this all out, I get 12x squared minus 4x plus 5. 